Not long after I saw Ingve at the Coliseum with Dio, I was at the Villa La Paz, this uh, ghetto apartment building that I was the manager of, and I had May- I was in Mayhem at the time, and we practiced there, and I got a recording deal. Actually, it started a while ago, and uh, Mike Varney had said, "Well, if you can get Dean, I'll get you a guitar player," and. Uh, so I got Dean and uh, moved into the Bay Area during this recording. But the guitar player that I had a choice of was one of them. I said, I jokingly said, hey, can Ingve play lead? We'll have a rhythm guitar player, and then Ingve could do the leads. And Mike said, I'm not sure, but I'll find out. Turns out he was busy. So Paul Gilbert came into the picture. I got his demo, and uh, that just uh, he was in Pennsylvania. And I really wanted that Ingve sound, so he sent me Kurt James, the guitar player, who took Ingve's place in Steeler. And that fit really good because he was a lot like Ingve. And he likes Hendrix and played a lot like Ingve because he showed him what to do. So the next time I saw Ingve, I had already been Dr. Mastermind. And he knew about that. And uh, he knew Kurt James and this guy named uh, Bill Abercrombie who played bass. And he actually worked out a lot of the songs on the first three Ingve records. And he's been my friend since uh, for quite a while now. And he's got some great stories, and but he's in Tennessee. And uh, so I go to the, the Starry Night. The show was Black and Blue, Saxon and Ingve on the same bill at the Starry Night. I think Jeff Lebansky was playing that night with Black and Blue. And uh, it was the first show that uh, they had redid the stage, which was pretty small. When we played there with Dio, it was still a church. It had the railing up and the kneel pads, you know, and uh, it was like a church altar thing. Well, they changed it so it was like, you know, three or four feet higher because <laughs> it was pretty low before. And uh, and the first show was Ingve Black and Blue and Saxon. And uh, I went down to see him and uh, I said, man, I love your new album. He's like, will you tell him, he was telling Angie this, will you tell him to shut the fuck up? You know, what the fuck are you, some groupie? I was just a big fan and it was a weird time in my life and uh <laughs> I had this great album out on one hand, and the other time, uh, other thing, I uh, I was broke and poor and uh, a criminal from managing these apartments. So anyway, uh, I was there to have a good time, and uh, it was a great show. Black and Blue Saxon and Ingve at uh, a thousand seat club. It has a balcony. It used to be a theater. It used to be the Mission. The Starry Night was this place called. The Mission, which was downtown for all the bums, and uh, on the big, there's a huge sign at the top of the building that said, Jesus, the light of the world, and uh, which has since, since come down. But uh, he played there a bunch of times, and so I went down every time that, that Ingve would play in town, and uh, I'd see him, and he always kicked that fucking pole because the pole is in the way. I've seen so many bands. I shot so many groups in that room in the 90s, and everybody hated that pole because even Lemmy would run into it. <laughs> he doesn't do a lot of running around on stage. But, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I've got to meet my two big heroes, which is uh, which is Lemmy and Ingve. And uh, yeah, as you can tell from Dr. Mastermind, it's like people say, the write-up said it sounds like Motorhead with Ingve on guitar. And that really made me feel good. Ingve went on, he played, you know, in Portland was always small. Portland's always a small town kind of thing. It's always a place that, it's like a gas stop. And people would come here to, you know, try out their show because it didn't matter because nobody bought records here anyway. Our old manager from Wild Dogs uh, worked for Journey and he used to say the same thing. Portland is a, you know, a no-buy town. Like like the Trailblazers is a, is a small market basketball team. So, uh... <laughs> uh Ingve kept coming back and coming back, and it was always on the same weekend that was my anniversary, the end of May, and I was always gone, so I missed a lot of shows. He probably thinks I don't like it. Wrong. I love the guy, man, and uh, I'm still a huge fan, and I want to just uh, put up a couple of videos here, and, uh, well, I want to thank you for watching, and uh, this was a, a great opportunity, and I want to thank uh, the guy in Sweden, Goran. I can't, I, is that how you say your name? The author of the uh, biography that's going to come out on Ingve someday. And uh, because of my bad typing, I'm talking on camera. And I just wanted to remind myself of all the great times I've had watching that guy and so many great sound checks. The sound checks with Ingve Malmsteen is like amazing. And uh, 
Well, uh, I think that's all I got to do. Uh, oh, yeah, the amp wall. I saw the amp wall in a picture. Actually, it was, he when he's playing this in Portland. It was one of the first shows because <laughs> people try out their stuff. And that's up an elevator. And uh, it's like 56 cabinets or something. And the guy working the show took a picture of this and said, will you look at this shit? They all work. There's speakers in every room. There's no fake dummy cabinets. And uh, I thought that, I go, knowing this guy, this guy's sense of humor a bit, it's kind of like a big finger up to you, uh, people who say he's pretentious. Well, how much more pretentious can you get by putting an entire wall of amps for you and giving the bass player, keyboard player, and drummer a little spot on the side? I thought that was funny as hell. But it was a great publicity stunt because everybody in the world picked up on it and published the pictures of this, this wall of Marshalls. And voila, genius, stroke of publicity genius. And uh, I hope he comes back and I hope we can go back to some shows uh, someday. And uh, when he does, I'm going to be there. So uh, I'll thank you for watching U.S. Metal TV. I'm Matt McCourt, a.k.a. Dr. Mastermind. And uh, this has been the Ingve special. Thank you. Good night.